Welcome to the Ethnic Podcast. My name is uh, Sindre Hoplan. Uh, today uh, we have a topic that's very tense uh, in the media these days. Uh, will there ever, ever be a, a happy ending for the collaborative economy in, in Spain? Uh, and with me to discuss this topic, we have three smart people as always. Uh, and this uh, week and this month, uh, we have, uh, first of all, Albert uh, uh, Canigural, uh, innovation strategist, uh, founder of Consumo Collaborativo, mm -hmm. uh, We Share Barcelona Connector, uh, and so on. Is that a, a good uh, presentation? Yeah, it's a good presentation. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, second of all, we have uh, Lucia Hernandez, expert on the collaborative economy. You're currently working with local government, you're working with Barcelona Activity also consumer collaborativo uh, and your your focus is on the tourism part right yes right yes and and, and last but not least we also have uh, Jaume Sunyol uh, you're the country manager for Drivey in in Spain uh, and for those of you that don't know Drivey is uh, Europe's largest peer-to-peer -peer car rental company is that right yeah yeah a platform a marketplace yeah. a marketplace right so uh, thank you all for being here I really appreciate you coming Thanks. Thank you. Uh, every week uh, there's something new uh, from the battle between authorities uh, and the sharing economy or collaborative economy like Airbnb, Uber, blah, blah, car. Uh, once, once a week the government wins the battle, the other week you know, it's the platforms that, that wins. Uh, I think the last one was uh, this week actually, uh, when the Superior Court of Catalonia has annulled the fine of 30,000 euros imposed by the government uh, two years ago. Uh, by offering tourist departments illegally uh, and also possibly making um, uh, Mayor uh, Ada Kalaus uh, very newly fine of 600,000 euros last month, not, not binding, uh, making a, a precedence. Uh, Albert, you, you've been writing and, and talking about the, these things for years now. Uh, these, these fines uh, that we're seeing in the paper and which is very relevant these days, is it just populism or politics or, or is, this a, is this a good way of dealing with these issues? What do you think? No, uh, usually, and it's not only my opinion, but also European Union opinion that uh, fines and forbidding things uh, lead uh, to... Um, it's, it's, not, it's not the best way to approach. Dialogue is always the, the best approach. And in the specific case of tourism, and Lucia can explain in more in more detail, there are there are a lot of cities that have dealt with that more with dialogue and uh, separating different types of activities. That in Barcelona we still we still have like bundled under the same umbrella of uh, alojamientos turísticos, where there are different activities uh, inside there that need to be separated. Uh, and, and, and yeah, but the thing is, uh, we are in a new territory, so it's also, I would say, normal that we have this kind of uh, moments and behavior, so people are trying to understand what's going on, both, and I think it's also important to separate the behavior of the platforms themselves, uh, or the marketplaces, and the end users, and we see there, there will be responsibilities and uh, rights and duties for all these parts, and we are still making them up, so it's normal that we are a little bit lost. Hmm. And, and, and Jaume, uh, you, you, you presented Drivey here today, and we're not reading about Drivey every day in the newspaper, uh, neither in Spain nor in France, at least not in a negative way. It seems like you find a way to, to uh, dealing with the, the government or authorities in, in a good way. Can you tell, how are you, how are you doing this? Well, it's uh, a bit different the regulations for each of the areas or the sub areas. Uh, and in our case, uh, what we do, basically, we have a platform where we connect people who have cars and they don't use it or they don't use it very often and people who need a car for a weekend or, or, uh, or holidays. So this, uh, the users who are uh, renting their cars to other users, this is considered uh, renting without driver. So in Spain, for example, this activity doesn't require a license. And I think most of the problems that are surfacing right now with platforms or so are related with licenses or, or tourism licenses for certain things or uh, taxi licenses for other platforms. So at the end, in our sub area, maybe that's the reason why we are not on, on the on the radar, on, on the regulation part, but it's because of these regulations. Uh, however, I think that all these platforms share certain things in common and the fact that the users are becoming not only consumers but also producers. So the produ 
prosumer a role that Albert and, and Lucia can explain much better. Uh, this is also new and this creates tensions to all the old companies or the traditional models. So at the end, uh, being very aware of all these changes and trying to adapt the regulation uh, in a fast way is key. Otherwise, we will see these kind of fines and problems and tensions. Hmm. And Lucia, you, you're, you're the expert there because we're talking about, uh, for example, Airbnb, which is very you know connected with tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are your thoughts of, of the latest you know articles in the newspapers? Um, well, I think that Airbnb, the problem in, with Airbnb in Barcelona is about a political issue. Uh, I think that the best way to, to address this, this problem is to, to, how Albert said, is to, to talk about it and to, to make agreements on, on what is the, the, best, the best way to, to, to deal with, this, with these externalities. No? Mm. Uh, Airbnb, right. I think that is, it, it It has a scale in a big way mm -hmm. and it's normal that traditional sector is worried about how they 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 understand that this thing no mm -hmm. but I think that they 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 need to understand that Airbnb is a represent a business model is a platform model and is that users wants mm -hmm. and they have to to integrate or to understand first and integrate this, this type of models into the traditional models. And in Barcelona, I think that they have to dialogue and, yeah. and, yeah. and try to, to find an agreement, no? as other cities in Europe has done. So uh, I think yeah. maybe maybe uh, you can elaborate a little bit more on the on the other cities because I think there are some examples uh, which, yes, are, which well, are really good as mm -hmm. maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not perfect but at least a reference. No, it's sure a reference in in Amsterdam is the most proactive on, mm. on that way mm. that way. They do the first uh, home sharing regulation in Europe and now has signed has just signed an agreement with Airbnb putting limits for example in how many days the host could rent the, their rooms or apartments mm -hmm. that are 60 days per mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. But it's the same that London has done and New Orleans. Right. That is 90 days per year. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, in New Orleans, there are, uh, into the, the agreement, in, in the agreement, there mm -hmm. is a, a little part that talk about to eliminate all the listings mm -hmm. in the center, in the, in, the, in the center, in the downtown of mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. I think that every city has to deal with that about uh, uh, having in, into account his character, their, their characteristics. Right. But it, because it's very different from one city to another. Yeah, but are, are, are we doing enough in, in, in Barcelona, do you think? Is, is this, uh, uh, what, what, what can I say, these, these, these cities that are references all over, the, all over Europe, uh, are Barcelona creating uh, you know, connections with these cities? Are, are they trying to solve this problem? Last year on, on the, in the Wisher Fest Barcelona, that is an event that uh, Wisher organized here, and we put in contact with uh, the, the person in Amsterdam that, that made the, the, revolution, the revolution, that they are in contact. But you know that in, in Spain, in, in general, all the tourism issues are delegated to the, one of the, the, the renting issue is delegated to the city halls mm -hmm. and generally that or other statements like this mm. has another role in mm. this uh, in this situation that is 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 like is like in difficult Right. To arrive between them mm. into a, a solution. Yeah, right, right. It, it, it's true that you say you, you said it earlier as well. Both of you were talking about how, how you know big companies are scaling and, and that they're scaling and want to grow fast. Uh, do you feel that you know governments can they ever can they ever uh, you know support the kind of growth that you are wishing for yourself? Mm, wow, well, it's a difficult question because at the end. Uh, first, uh, on a European level, there is um, th there are some guidelines that they presented in in June that support the sharing economy and also uh, basically they try to present a guide for countries to regulate the sharing economy. Uh, but then what happens is that there are many levels on, on regulations. So there is the European Commission and there is each country's regulation, some local regulations as well, and even city regulations. So at the end, 
these affects to many levels and some companies are affected by a lot of levels. Some are countries that are faster than others to define these blurry limits between uh, citizens and professionals mm. and, right. and and at the end it's all about defining these limits and very clearly establishing some um, rules mm. that make the traditional companies and the new economy or the new collaborative economy mm. compatible mm. in a way that it's fair for everybody. Yeah, exactly. And Albert, you, you're, you're traveling all over mm. the world and, and Europe in general, uh, and you're seeing all these different cities and how they are adapting to this kind of new economy. Uh, how, how is Spain compared with the rest of Europe? Because you've seen a lot. No, we are a kind of a hot spot uh, in both positive and, and, uh, and problematic way. I mean, uh, there are some studies from European Union also mentioning that uh, we are one of the countries with more activity from the users. So like, I think it was 6% of the users, according to this study, have offered mm. either a, a room or a car or uh, something on a, on a like platform like Wallapop or participated mm. on a crowdfunding. So we are quite active. And the number of platforms in Spain is pretty large. Mm. And, uh, and the adoption is, is also quite massive. I think you can ask around. Yeah. So from, in terms of platforms and activity, uh, we are quite well ranked. I would say between France, UK and Spain, we are the top three countries. Mm. Probably uh, France a little bit ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we are probably the number one in, uh, in conflicts. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, I mean... We should ask what's the current regulation scheme that Jauma was explaining, at, yeah. at, especially at national and local level. Mm. Mm, there are some things that are not about legal debate or economic debate. It's mm. political debate, as mm. uh, Lucia also hinted. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I think it's a mix and, and, and the power of some of the lobbies that we have. For example, out of the sharing economy, we have the energy lobby, mm. which is a very famous impuesto del sol, mm. which is very unique uh, around the world. Mm. And this is because we have certain types of schemas here and maybe in other sectors that are heavily regulated. Right. Uh, the same is happening. Yeah. But I think the level of adoption from the users also will uh, will 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 have some pressure on the, on that on that respect, and I would say we are a little bit slow on innovation on, on the regulation uh, using technology to, for example, what Jama was saying, no measure uh, what is the level of activity of these uh, of these companies of the, uh, and maybe the city has a can can set a cap a limit mm. to some of this activity, but maybe not by las by license, but by capping the number of activity as a whole exactly uh, so there are other approaches for example one of the ones I like and learned recently was in Sao Paulo in Brazil uh, they actually created a kind of a um, schema where the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, ride-sharing companies or the Uber type of thing, basically Uber there, uh, they need to buy kilometers. So there is, there is a, there's a bolsa, how you say, a yeah. stock, yeah. let's say, of, of kilometers and in order to operate. And there, there is a limit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, need to, they need to buy kilometers there. So it's a, an uh -huh. interesting way. Well. So and, and, and the thing is not so much how to regulate, that I think we have examples on how to regulate, mm -hmm. but how to monitor and how to enforce, how to use technology in a smart way mm -hmm. to actually keep control that this regulation is applied. And exactly. I think we have, we have, we have some opportunity there, mm, and neither in Spain, I would say, nor in almost anywhere else have been used that opportunity yet. Hmm. Well, you, you're in transportation, John, what, what do you think of this, this kind of solutions? Well, I think it's necessary to define uh, the limits and the well basically to define the differences between the professional services and also this sharing economy or basically uh, sharing costs mm. uh, models mm. Mm. and at the end this depends on each of the sub areas mm. uh, some countries are approaching this as a whole like uh, they define that there is a uh, an amount for any sharing economy related activity for a user but some other countries are trying to be specific on each sub area hmm. I, I think it's better to, to approach on the latest so hmm. to be specific on each sub area hmm. but this requires quite a lot of technical legislative uh, work hmm. to understand the models to understand the costs and, hmm. and the different 
systems to analyze this. And, and as an example, this kind of solutions, I think it's quite smart to find these solutions like a pool of kilometers or a pool of uh, days per year. Uh, and, and I heard that some countries like Belgium, for example, they have defined our same activity in a very specific way. And you can earn a maximum of uh, mm. an X amount per year. You can rent a car a maximum of 60 days per year mm. in a way of sharing costs. Right. Then if you surpass this limit, uh, you are a professional doing this mm. activity. Mm. So understanding these barriers or these lines, more than barriers, these lines is important because then the, the traditional companies can feel more comfortable. Mm. Otherwise, they feel that uh, you are playing with different rules and they have very strict rules in mm. traditional companies. Right. So that's why they put pressure and they lobby to change the regulations or mm. to forbid the, mm. the thing. Yeah. On, on this sense, I think at the end, we all want the same, which is we want a clear uh, understanding of what's fair for the platforms, for the users, and also the traditional companies. Yeah, right. But this needs to be defined by the administration, and it's not easy. Hmm. And, and I think the, the other approach to that, uh, also it's an innovation, it's trial and, trial and error, no? Yeah. We're in a startup world here. Exactly. So startups mm, uh, always make a lot of mistakes, but learn on the way. Mm -hmm. So regulators try to make it perfect from looking at it during three years, and it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you need to try, maybe set a threshold of something, and maybe move this threshold up or down, depending on what's going on and what you measure. Mm -hmm. now, right. now in France, for example, they recently approved a law, where, and very specifically, if you are renting your car and it's above 7,600 or something like mm -hmm. that euros, mm -hmm. then you need to become a freelancer. Exactly. So it's super specific. The same yeah. with uh, no? and and in the same regulation in Amsterdam they start with I think 90 days and now it's becoming 60 days and they are they have an agreement a technical agreement with Airbnb to share some data mm -hmm. and to enforce this regulation and they will block the so the first and actually this agreement that they sign has a duration of two years they mm -hmm. they agreed mm -hmm. to review the agreement in mm -hmm. two years mm -hmm. because this is going so fast that it's impossible to forecast what's going to happen right. so it's a start do something mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. a kind of a lean approach yeah. mm, also with regulation and, and we are and here we are more like a paralysis analysis you know, yeah I was, at that I think I was about to say <laughs> what do you think Lucia you, you, you're in the government uh, working with them uh, are we afraid to, yes. to, to fail no no yes exactly it's like I, I don't know how to start she said that the person one of the person I'm I, I'm working Uh, with with the Generalitat de Catalunya, I, I don't know how to start. But start with something. I don't know. You have reference now. You have Amsterdam. You have London. You have New Orleans. In New York, there is uh, some rule that mm, that is called one host, one home. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Then so is at, at the end, I think that is very, very. You can you can be very specific in every city. Hmm. Then start with something, hmm. and you can revise in six months, one month. I don't know. But the, but you have to start because citizens are are demanding eh? are demanding rules and and demanding are demanding limits and are demanding agreements. Right, and and as Albert saying, the, the adoption of these platforms are are, are huge in Spain uh, in general. People are using these platforms, and and uh, in spite of people using it a lot, I feel like there's the people that are seeing these platforms as a problem are screaming the loudest, mm. loudest, and the people that are seeing it as a solution, you know, they're they're a bit quiet because you know it's still you know in a gray mm. zone. Do you feel like that you know the the people that are seeing this as a problem, they are screaming the loudest, and that's why the politicians are are on their side, or what do you think? I think that that the, that the tension that the city hall or the Generalitat de Catalunya is uh, have with Airbnb or with with these platforms are, are translating to the to the people, no, in the in the street. And I think that this is a very a, grown, a, a big mistake, no, because people effectively they 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 don't they don't know how to how to how to work with 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 that. Mm -hmm. They they are I they they they, they don't want to. To, for in, in one hand to put uh, their apartments into the platform, but they, they more of the pe most of the people need the money to, to arrive to the end of the month to to survive. No, then exactly. it's a good way also to to have an income and 
and hmm. a lot of people that they need. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the interesting things that is happening recently, and I'm really excited for that for next year, yeah. is the kind of uh, user guild, uh, user producers, the people who are offering their car or offering their home or they are uh, active in, in different platforms or they are drivers in some of these platforms, they're starting to organize themselves hmm. as a collective. We have okay. a good example here in Barcelona with a subset of the Airbnb users, hmm. and not only Airbnb, other hmm. platforms too, mm -hmm. people who are renting either a, um, a room in their house or their full house when they are not there. Mm. So it's a subset of the activity. Yeah. Home sharing. That's a home sharing activity. Mm, and, and, and they've grouped themselves in something called Bainzi Amphitrions de Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And they are lobbying for their own interest, uh, both Uh, in front of the government and in front of the platform. Exactly. So it's a, it's a third actor and I think we are going to see more and more of these kind of guilds hmm. uh, appearing um, in the, probably next year because uh, people will, will, will have this need of defend their own rights and uh, yes. it's not about confrontation. It's very, it's very often it's very uh, propositive so it's not mm. like trying to, to forbid something it's just with yeah, new proposals yeah. and so on it's very creative. But it, it's necessary to, to have this protection. What, what do you think these platforms uh, are Are, are they protecting their, uh, you know, their ev evangelists and their sales agents, like the people that are on these platforms? Uh, uh, how necessary is it for for everyone to, you know, join a kind of organization? Because I guess a lot of people that are listening and seeing this, they have rented their car, maybe they have, you know, rented their house or apartment or their room. How necessary is it to, you know, become a member of some kind of guild like this? What do you think, Luthia? No, I think that is necessary. People want to participate, wants to participate in the production of value, but wants to participate in taking decisions or with or the taking decisions in the relationship that it has with uh, platforms and with public administrations, and in the in the sense that they they want to to know to to be part of the decisions of the products or service that they they want to consume or they they want to develop. Hmm. Then. People wants to participate, and people is empowered now and very connected. Then it's always that that is going on, and is is very li liquid, no? It's it's, it's it's developing in a, in an organic way, hmm. and very very important that be, because we are worried uh, now about the platforms that we know now, but innovation is going on, and is going alone. Then I think that it's very important the the, the, the part of the innovation and regulation very exactly. important. And Jame, you you have a lot of people you know using your platform. How, how are you protecting you know your people? Not long ago, uh, two weeks ago, we did the first meeting for users in Barcelona, and it went quite well because we had 20 power owners, the owners that love us and that they met, they exchanged information, how they are doing, what works for them, the prices that they set and how they do. So these kind of meetings that we started to have them in France a few years ago, they work quite well because people meet each other, they can exchange all around the tips and tricks on how they use the platform and so. And it's a way to... to give this sense of community of these users who are using our platform uh, and at the end uh, this could happen also on the other side which is the, the people who rent cars as well so we did it for the owners so car owners but it could happen on the other side as well. mm. I, see, I think that, that platforms uh, in, in the collaborative economy don't 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 won't develop well if they have if they not have a, a community. Hmm. This is hmm. very very important for hmm. for me. It's very important the, the sense of community because at the end, if not is, if the platform has not a community, it's a digital platform. It's hmm. not a sharing economy platform. Mm -hmm. It's not it's another type of or, or on demand platform. No, But in, the, in the in the collaborative economy, the, I think that the point of the to have a community who share values and is very very important. Hmm. But uh, how, how do you feel platforms like Airbnb and Uber, the biggest one, blah, blah, car, how, uh, how are they do, doing this? Airbnb made uh, an event one month ago, ago in Los Angeles, in Open Airbnb, I was there and it was <laughs> there a, 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 a community, very engagement with the company and... It's like a mental sense of, or a sensitive sense of, um, of I I belong to a community very cool, no? Mm. And that's it's like, bueno, it's, it's very, it's incredible. Mm. No? Airbnb has a community, very engagement with the, mm. okay. with the organization. Cool. 
So uh, these companies that we mentioned, they they ha- had like a, a kind of like a, a difficult uh, track record in the last two years of dealing with the government. Uh, but let's you know picture like a scenario where Airbnb and Uber would enter Barcelona for the first time tomorrow. Albert, what what do you think? How how should they do it differently this time to <laughs> to you know not you know uh, clinch with the government? What what is your advice? No, I think um, well, it's a, it's a complicated one. Uh, but probably, uh, if you would, the f- the first thing is to have also on the side of the uh, regional and local governments people who are experts and who can deal with that. Because also in public conference, we've heard we were f- we were sitting in front of some of these companies, and we had not no idea what they were doing. Uh, how how to deal with them and this that has been said by government officials in, in public in public events and i think that that, that, that was was uh, good to recognize this position but it's also important that uh, that the government gets ready for that on one side and on the side of the companies also uh, really understand the local regulations and especially uber has recognized that the way they started to operate in many many cities in the past was incorrect they also said that in public and that now they are trying to be a little a little softer and to understand what's the situation and to have dialogues and, and tables with the with the cities mm. And, and and yeah and, and try to help and, and be propositive on on the ways to to regulate no mm. airbnb mm. they just really release something called uh what's the regulation tool chest, uh, the, no, the, the, tool, the tool, tool chest, chest which is mm. a 20 pages document with some ideas on how to regulate airbnb okay mm. so you propose something and then mm, so uh, being being propositive on on finding solutions no mm. or for example for the future of work mm. that is also a big topic with uh, people organizing all this income mm. as their main source of income as an aggregated uh, right. as an aggregated sum mm. Mm, uh, there are uh, proposals from etsy etsy mm. is yeah. uh, an american company kind of ebay for uh, handmade stuff and, and, mm. and vintage mm. uh, people are making uh, some of them are artisans and making a lot of money through Etsy mm-hmm. so they are making some proposal on how to reinvent social security mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and income stability and it's a proposal from the public policy department of Etsy which is very interesting so mm-hmm. uh, these companies also need to help to innovate and make proposals not, not just mm-hmm. try to and, and try to find a, a middle ground yeah right. mm-hmm. uh, we we're talking about different terms there and it's, it's a bit something else but it's still very connected because we're talking about the sharing economy, the collaborative economy. Uh, the other day I heard uh, capitalism cross-dressing. You know, it, it, there's so many terms and, and people are using them, you know, uh, differently. And you're you're like the expert. So I, th- I guess you you have a very you know clear mind of what to use when. But for people in general, it, it's like a, a bunch of words. Lucia, should we leave sharing economy behind? Is this a word that we shouldn't use? Or what, what should we say? No, I don't think so, because sharing economy is not only a term, it's a, it's a movement, it's, a, it's another way of doing things. It's more sustainable, and sharing economy put the tools that for, and, and to do what they need in, in each moment. Then it's, it's, it's not all about uh, collaborative consumption platforms, it's about, it's about governance, it's about participation, Mm. It's about a lot of things. Then I think that the sharing economy there or collaborative economy, we prefer collaborative economy because it's the translation that we made in the, at the beginning from the sharing economy term. And, and I think that uh, it's, it's, it's a movement. And mm. as a movement, uh, I think that is good, the, 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 the term collaborative mm. economy. Right. What, yeah, what, what, the way I'm explaining recently, uh, also after listening to uh, Arun Sundarajan, who is a professor at New York University, and I recommend to, to follow his work because he's, he's quite interesting. On, 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 the, on the terminology, for example, he, he wrote a book recently, and the editor uh, forced him to to have the sharing economy as title, because it's the most popular term, mm. and people would not understand what you're talking about uh, if mm. you are trying to push for another term. Mm. Then, in the, um, then in the subtitle, it's understanding uh, or the effects of work and the future of work in the crowd capitalism. If you are not changing the general schema of uh, selling, renting, uh, like monetary exchange. I think the term crowd capitalism is quite interesting and quite uh, quite mm. precise for that. Mm. 
and it's a subset of the of the companies that we see where people are yeah, renting selling or, or, or using their time and selling their time for a, for for some money and then uh, so these companies are competing inside the capitalist system with the traditional industrial version that's one that's one thing and then inside this collective economy big broad term you also see companies who are trying to have exchanges uh, sharing the cost or giving something for free or using alternative currencies so uh, or creating commons uh, so who are trying to compete with the system uh, no not 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 inside the system mm -hmm. and that's that's why it's a little bit confusing and some people complain that this isn't this is not precise uh, but this is the way I'm trying to explain it uh, yeah. presently mm -hmm. and I think it helps mm -hmm. I don't know the audience yes, will tell but every, everything <laughs> changes very fast because because I think that that, that the next is the platforms of the collaborative economy integrating the traditional model. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How, how are you phrasing yourself? Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the keys is what Albert said. The, the term sharing economy is not very precise. And I think it's more like a label and it can be used at many levels. So there are the most pure sharing economy level. I, I don't think a platform like Drive could be applied to a pure sharing economy because we are a company and as a platform we want to make uh, our technology better and better and make money as well. So at the end we have this uh, tag, but it could be a different one uh, because our main focus as a platform is to explore this opportunity that it's the new technology and the revolution that we are in, which is not only the mobility revolution, how cars will be in the next five years, we don't know, but we know that cars are changing a lot, how people share their assets and especially cars will change a lot. Uh, and at the same time, the on-demand economy uh, is something very new. We could also be considered on-demand as well. So. It's tags that you apply, and certain <laughs> platforms are more pure on a specific tag and others uh, less. And especially there are some uh, companies or platforms trying to benefit from these tags in a way that it's maybe not the purest uh, term. But I, I, I think that as a platform, our main focus is to have a product or have a service that is the best for the user that creates value in a way that it's super easy and this technology that uh, we are developing that we are uh, creating and for example on Drivey now uh, apart from our apps and so you can install a device in your car so you can as, a, as, a, as an owner enable rentals without physically meet uh, by activating the car and then the person renting opens the car with the smartphone. Mm -hmm. So this we call it drive open. All this technology facilitates the way of doing this kind of new mm -hmm. interactions and this is creating a, a new uh, a new service that, that we are trying to offer that is more on the on-demand side, you want a car, you click, uh, tap on, on the smartphone and you have one. Mm. So uh, we are all uh, on many ways of the spectrum, but some companies are more on one side, some on the other mm. side. And, right. and sharing economy is just a tag. Exactly. Yeah, there is there's an interesting work from another American professor called Boyd Coin, who actually mm. lives in Barcelona. Oh, right. He created a compass, kind of a circle with six axes. A little bit, uh, what uh, Jama was saying. So, the, and what you do is you characterize the company that is, you apply the, the label sharing economy, mm. but then you analyze. Are they market oriented? So they are have monetary exchange. They are sharing uh, sharing cost, or they are doing something for free, or uh, alternative mm. currency, alternative value exchange. Are they using private technology, something in between, something something in between, or open technologies? Mm. Uh, do they have a traditional approach for companies centralistic with shareholders, or they are closer to a cooperative model? Mm. So they have six axes, and you actually what you do is characterize the the company, and we will see the coexistence of different types of companies and approach in, in the sectors. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in, in, in tourism, uh, Airbnb is the more, West no, uh, the more well-known one, which be the more uh, traditional uh, in terms of company and in terms of monetary exchange is very traditional, although they organize the offer and the demand in a different way. Mm -hmm. They optimize that. Mm -hmm. But then you have home exchange, where the value is not 
uh, is, is exchanged in a different way, mm. or you have a culture thing that goes for free and mm. it's a social exchange. Uh, so we will see that also in, in mobility and in other mm. sectors, dif different different types, and people will choose, and we will have an ecosystem of different options. Oh, that's interesting. Sure. And to, to round this up, we could be talking for hours, but it's uh, we, we got to wrap it up somehow. Uh, and as a last question, uh, 2016 has been a, quite uh, a year with a lot of conflicts. Uh, but, uh, you know, the year is ending uh, soon uh, and we're going into a new year. Uh, Lucia, you're involved with both Barcelona Activa and, and you know, government and, and everything. Uh, what do you think of the next year? It's going to be another year with conflict? What do you think? No, I don't think so. I think that when we are going on, it, it, it will be the year of the, of the agreements, of the agreements, of the really? putting limits on the manage, manage in terms of tourists. Is basic, no? That it's very important to to manage not only to to complain or not only to to be what is grown, but uh, also to to develop a good a strategic plan for a half or long or long term, not for the next year, for exactly. a long half or or long term. Yeah, yeah, cool. And in that case, I think that that they are very they they are ready. To, to do it after this year that is, is still being hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Albert, are you optimistic as well for the next year? No, I'm an optimistic person in general. So, <laughs> it, uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, things will evolve. And, uh, And I think in general, also what I, not only locally but globally. So we, we are we are getting a global knowledge on the on this topic that uh, we can we can we can we can tap into. Uh, and I think more of this knowledge is being shared among cities, and they are coordinating better and better. Uh, and I think it will be uh, the year also of the of the cities and the sharing economy. And the Wisher Fest in in Paris is going to be devoted to, to the cities because this it, it, is the space, no. And I think we'll see more of this regulation coming to coming to the cities and 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 richer richer debate and sharing and sharing best practices. Mm.